I am Anil Kumar sharing with you questions on derivatives application in economics. Let me thank my subscriber for sending me these questions. I am not an expert in economics, but with my knowledge of mathematics, I will try to solve these questions. Question number one is straightforward. We need to find derivatives of all these functions. Applying different rules, we have to name the rules while we find derivatives. Question number two, we are given Tp equals to 90k square minus kq, k equals to 30. We need to calculate Tp, which is total product, Mpk, which is marginal product of capital, and Apk, which is average product of capital. So let me do my best to answer these set of questions uh, one by one. So here are all the parts of uh, question number one. Find derivative of y equals to x to the power of 8 plus 8 times x to the power of 11 plus 11. So let me rewrite the question. We have y equals to x to the power of 8 plus 8 times x to the power of 11 plus 11, right? So in the first step, we'll apply the distributive property and expand it right that is to say i'm going to multiply with x to the power of 8 both the terms and then with 8 right so that is the distributive property which we are going to apply so we could write this function y as equals to x to the power of 8 times x to the power of 11 their exponents get added up right then with 11 it will be 11 x to the power of 8 now multiplying with 8, we get 8 times x to the power of 11 plus 8 times 11 gives us 88. Now we can find the derivative with respect to x. So we'll find derivative with respect to x. So we get dy dx, that is we normally say d dx of y, so we say dy dx equals to 8 plus 11 is 19. I should have gone one more step, but you know, 8 plus 11 is 19. So this derivative will be 19 x to the power of minus 1, which gives me 18 here, right? Plus 8 times 11 is 88 x to the power of 7. Here we get 88 x to the power of 10. And for derivative of a constant, it is 0, right? So that becomes our answer. So we can write dy dx or the derivative of the given function is you could take x to the power of 7 as common, right? So let's take 7 as common. And what you get here is 19 x to the power of, when you take away 7, you get 11. And uh, here, let me rearrange them, right? So we could write this first. So we get x to the power of 3. And here, I mean 88, I forgot to write that, plus 88, right? So that becomes the solution of part one. So we have not applied the product rule here. We expand it, and then we have applied the power rule here, right? So basically, we applied power rule in this particular case. The next example is 4x to the power of 5 divided by 1 minus 3x. Let me rewrite this as y equals to 4x to the power of 5 over 1 minus 3x. Right. So here we are going to apply the quotient rule. So in that case, the derivative dy dx can be written as square of the denominator, which is 1 minus 3x whole square. Derivative of this, let me write d dx of 4x to the power of 5 times the function 1 minus 3x minus 4x to the power of 5 times derivative of denominator, which is 1 minus 3x. Right. So that is the rule for derivative by quotient rule right so if you have uh, 
u over v as your function, right? So if you have to find derivative of u over v, in that case, it is v square, u derivative v minus u v derivative, right? So that is what it is. <coughs> so let us uh, find the derivatives and simplify. 4x to the power of 5 gives us 20x to the power of 4 times 1 minus 3x. And here we get 4x to the power of 5 times minus 3x, derivative is minus 3, divided by 1 minus 3x whole square. You can open this bracket and then simplify. We get 20x to the power of 4 minus 3 times, uh, well, we could, anyway, let's just expand it. So minus 3 times 60, x to the power of 5, and here we get plus 12x to the power of 5 over 1 minus 3x whole square, right? Now, this could be written as 20x to the power of 4 minus 60 from 12 gives us minus uh, 8 and then 5 take away 1 is 4 x to the power of 5 over 1 minus 3x whole square. So the numerator we could take uh, uh, 2, 4 common, we could take 4 common, right? Uh, and x to the power of 4. So taking 4 x to the power of 4 common in the numerator, we could write 5 minus if you divide this by 4, you get 12x, right, over 1 minus 3x whole square. So that becomes the result for this derivative, and we have applied the quotient rule. The next question here is, we need to find derivative for z equals to, let me rewrite this, z equals to 3x to the power of 4 plus 5 to the power of 6. So we are going to apply the chain rule here. So combination of power rule and chain rule. So what we get here is differentiation of z with x gives us 6 times 3x to the power of 4 plus 5 to the power of 5, 1 less than 6 times derivative of inside function which is 3x to the power of 4 plus 5. So I hope that is clear. So I've cut down on one step. Anyway, let's continue. I hope you understand that part. 3x to the power of 4 plus 5 to the power of 5. Here the derivative is 12x cubed, right? Now you can always multiply this. 12 times 6 is 72 and uh, we have x cubed times 3x to the power of 4 plus 5 to the power of 5, correct? Now we are given an equation and we have to find derivative of this particular function. So we'll differentiate both sides with respect to x, right? So if you do that, you get d dx of 4x squared minus y cubed equals to d dx of 97. Now 97 being constant that will be 0 right. Here it is d dx of 4x square minus d dx of y cube is equal to 0. Now derivative of 4x square is 4 times 2 8 and x and here we get implicit derivation, we get 3y squared times dy dx equal to 0. Taking this to the right side, we get 3y squared dy dx equals to 8x. And from here, we can write down what is dy dx. It is equals to 8x divided by 3y squared. Correct? So that becomes our answer. So here the solution is that the derivative is equal to 8x divided by 3y squared. Right? 
Uh, now the next question here is we need to find derivative of the function which will apply the product rule. So here we'll apply product rule. The question is y equals to 5x minus 1 times 3x plus 4 whole cube. So in the product rule we get dy dx equals to derivative of the first function which is d dx of 5x minus 1 times the other function which is 3x plus 4 whole cube plus first function 5x minus 1 times derivative of the second function right that's the rule and now we can find the derivative derivative of this factor is just 5 so we get 3x plus 4 whole cube plus 5x minus 1 derivative is 3 times 3x plus 4 I mean plus 4 whole square times derivative of inside function which is 3 so now let me just clearly write this so 3x plus 4 whole square could be taken as common so let's take 3x plus 4 whole cube as common we left with 5 times 3x plus 4 from the first term and here we have 3 times 3 is 9 I'm sorry square okay because this is square right 3 times 3 is 9 9 times 5x minus 1 okay so that gives you 3x plus 4 whole square you could expand this and then simplify 15x plus 20 plus 9 times 5 45x minus 9 now that could be written as 3x plus 4 whole square so 5x plus 45x gives us 60x and 20 take away 19 is 11 right so that becomes the derivative of this particular function where we applied the product rule correct now let's move on to the application question which is we are given total product equation as 90k square minus k cube where k equals to 30 we need to calculate tp the total product marginal product of capital and average product of capital now part a total product tp is for k equals to 30 so we just substitute k equals to 30 in this equation so we get tp equals to 90 times 30 k square means 30 square minus 30 cube is it okay 30 cube so you can use calculator to calculate this out or you can take 30 common and then we can actually find the answer also anyway let's do this 30 I mean let me write down now 30 square times 90 minus 30 cube is equal to we get this answer as equal to 54,000 right so this is 54,000 part B is marginal product of capital now marginal product is is rate of change actually correct so what we have here is we have TP equals to 90 K square minus K Q. So rate of change is D of TP with respect to K will be 180K minus 3K square. So that becomes the marginal product and if we are using the value of K as 30, so if K equals to 30, in that case we can calculate this answer as k equals to 30 gives us 180 times 30 minus 3 times 30 square right 
So that is what it is. Let's calculate this answer. 180 times 30 minus 3 times 30 square is equal to 2700. Right. And uh, part C is we need to find average product, right? So average product is total product divided by K, right? So it is TP divided by K. So that should be 90. When you divide this by K, you get 90K minus K square. Perfect. Now to find its value for K equals to 30, let me just push this page a bit. So, so let's calculate this. If k equals to 30, then what do we get? So average product will be equal to 90 times 30 minus 30 square, which is 90 times 30 minus 30 square equals to 1800. So 1800 is the answer. So the answers for these are, we get 1800 for the last one, 2700 for this one and for the first one 54,000. So that is how we could solve all these questions. So I hope it makes sense to you. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe, that'll be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.